Is it possible to cook using electricity on a budget 12 volt setup? Yeah. Today, we're finding out the answer to this. We just lost power. We're adding new mods, we're doing trials, we're doing tests, a lot of stuff goes right. Oh, it's working! <laughs> it's doing it! A lot of stuff goes wrong. Oh. Ah. <laughs> we lost power immediately. But at the end of the video, we're going to tell you guys, is it actually worth using electricity to cook your dinner? Can it be done on a budget? Is it possible? Or is it just an overhyped way to cook dinner that's not budget friendly at all? All right, so tonight's a very exciting night because tonight is our first night testing out the rooftop tent. But it's also going to be our first night doing a dry run for our sort of big three week trip. So we got a new sort of cooking method that we're going to try because the place where we're going, we can't actually have fires. That's a bit of a good spoiler there. Um, but yeah, we can't have fires. And we usually cook on a little butane stove. And this is fine when you're doing like one or a couple nights. Like we've done even a week on it and it's like fine. But if you want to do more complex meals and you don't have say a fire to like maybe prepare bread or a second meal, uh, stuff can get boring. And I, I love cooking on butane. I think it's really easy. I carry a stack ton of these bottles in the car and um, yeah, it's just super cheap, easy, efficient way to cook food. But the issue we're facing is that we're going somewhere where we can't have a fire. So usually we'd have a second you know, heat source where we can put stuff to keep warm while we're maybe making the next part of the dinner or whatever. So that's where we're gonna try something different. So I know that induction cooking is very, very trendy and popular these days in uh, you know, full drive touring. And I can see why, there's many good reasons why. Um, this isn't an induction cooker. This is an electric hot plate, um, just that mum had lying around. And we're gonna try and use this to basically be our second heat source. So that unit is around 1200 watts, um, which in comparison to one of those induction cookers, they go all up to 2000 watts, which I only have a 1500 watt inverter. So, you know, not gonna be able to probably take full advantage of an induction cooker. Now, the reason why people don't really use these hot plates anymore is because induction cooking is a lot more efficient. There's less heat loss. The way induction cooking works, it's just a much more efficient technology. So what we're gonna do tonight is essentially a dry run of, you know, camping out in a place where we can't have fires. So just to test out the whole new rooftop tent, everything our 12 volt setup you know the whole nine and what's going to make it more interesting is that we're running this at a more worst extreme case possible so the car hasn't been driving all day it hasn't been actually on the road for like four or five days it's literally just been charging through that 110 watt panel so essentially tonight we're going to be cooking off 12 volt um, using this 120 amp hour lithium battery and we're going to have those two stoves going we're also going to be using the travel buddy and just for reference, it's 525 right now and we've just turned the travel buddy on, so we'll see how long it takes. All right, so it's me and Anya in the tent tonight, so we'll uh, get this popped. You know what, it'll be interesting too to work out um, if we get any condensation tonight, because that's the one thing I didn't actually uh, talk about when I first did the, you know, the first overview video. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Boom, won't get tired of a 30 second setup. And yeah, she's all ready to go. Well, I need, we need to make it first. All right, well, obviously the one, so yeah, obviously because we couldn't fit the bedding in, it's just got, you know, the two uh, mattresses and the sheet, but that's fine because we'll just throw the doona up and it'll be all good. You're definitely gonna get used to having to climb this ladder. That's the one thing everyone tells me about. The worst thing about rooftop tents is the bloody ladder, but I'm not 70 yet, so I should be able to handle it all right. <laughs> Another thing I'll do while I'm here is run the wires for my lights. I would have loved to actually like grommet going in so I can keep something hard wired in all the time. And I think in the future, I'll probably make my own grommet um, just so I can do that. And all I do, it's already ready to go in the tent all the time. Plug it in and then it's just a tap touch light. It makes it easy if you're down like, on, the, on the ground, you're like, oh, lights off. <laughs> you like that? When are all the rooftop tents gonna have that feature? I'm gonna get better at climbing this every day, I swear. So now that um, we're camping up in our rooftop tent, we don't need the awning to be set up. You know, I'm not trying to keep Jew off the swag anymore, but it is nice to have just for a bit of shelter. And you know, if it is, if it was going to rain, I definitely want this set up. And now that, you know, we don't have a swag in the floor here, we have so much more room to sort of um, use it as actual shelter, so. All right, so now we're ready to start cooking dinner, which we're having palmers for dinner um and we're even making our own wedges on the travel buddy the travel buddy's been on now for probably 40 minutes yeah that travel buddy actually heated up really well at 13 volts which is a huge difference between you know cooking with a travel buddy on an agm battery compared to yeah they're already like and these are frozen by the way these are straight out of the freezer so we'll throw these straight back in the travel buddy 
All right, boom. And now we'll start the fun part. So this is gonna be the real strain because this thing has got four power modes and um, when it's on number four, it pulls like 66 amps. You know what, I'm feeling a bit exciting. Let's crank this up to three. That's probably about 40 amps. And we're at 11.9 volts. Now note, as the voltage drops, I do not have a step up converter on the travel buddy. So the travel buddy is gonna take a hit. It's not gonna heat up as fast because the voltage is low. And I know it's not good to, you know, stress out your batteries down to, you know, tank them to a low voltage every time, but this is a lithium. They are rated for many cycles. And I mean, the whole point of me getting that battery was to test it anyway. So I'm gonna wanna test it as much as we can and see, you know, how it performs. <laughs> <laughs> We're really, the voltage is really, really tanking now. Hi, come have a look if you want. We're doing a full shakedown test. That's going, turn this on? that's going, travel buddy's going, fridge is going, everything's going. Did you just turn this on? Uh, probably like five minutes ago. It's not really getting warm. What do you expect though? You're like, you're drawing that and the travel buddy though. That's probably gonna be like 80 amps. It's only like 46, but yeah. But like, you're asking a bit out of it though. It's a travel buddy and that at the same time. Yeah, I am. I know, it's, it's and the fridge and this big light on. I'm just wondering to see if we could do it with the hot plate, but I, it's not but looking like, like we can. Yeah, because you've got the travel buddy going. Yeah, no, but I just think we should be able to. The travel buddy's only drawing three amps. Three, it only draws like three and a half amps. I don't know what's slowing us down right now. If it's either this is just not efficient, like it's losing too much heat around the sides. I mean, it's got to be. Do you want? Should we? Should we? Why well, I can whack one in? <laughs> yeah, and because this is a pretty. <gasps> oh, we just lost power. And it's oh a no. Pan as well. Oh no. Yeah, you've hardly got any surface there. Hang on a minute. We've just. <laughs> well. I think the inverter trip then, or we just, or I think it was actually the BMS on the lithium battery. The voltage got way too low and it shut itself off. So that's not a great first test. The wedges will keep going, but I think we're gonna have to revert to gas for the rest. But I mean, I guess this is a good chance to actually make sure our old Kmart 20 dollar cooker is still working, which, look at that. Imme oh, immediate superb heat. It's already gonna start sizzling in seconds. And that's why, and I mean, I think if we had, you know, everything more on our side, we had more batteries, like this is 120 amp hours. So I am asking, as Liam said, I am asking a bit out of it to, you know, run this as well. I don't know, we still, the, the travel buddy's still on, so we'll to keep hooking those wedges and see how we go. Yeah, we're gonna need a bit more power or just have the batteries more charged to do sort of cooking like that. I think that, you know, cooking electric is here. If you've got the money, you can do it right now and, and it's great. But if you want to do it on a budget, I think it's still pretty hard to, you know, do induction cooking with, you know, I think if I was, if I had been just driving for four hours, got here, immediately cooked on that, I reckon it would have been fine. But if you're planning to camp out at the same place for like three or four nights and only have like a small solar panel and, you know, you plan on to induction cook every meal, I just don't think it's possible unless you have like a massive solar array, you know, three or four batteries. Yeah, but I don't know, I'm keen to try this again. All right, so it's time to check these wedges. They've been in there for like 45 minutes now. So we'll see, hopefully they've cooked a bit and uh, we can eat them. Ooh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they look crispy. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, it's warm. So that was 45 minute preheat. And then they were actually in there for 45 minutes and there's not a lot of them really. Edible, but they're not, um, well, throw them back in. All right, so it's been another 45 minutes since we last checked the wedges. So that means it's been 45 minutes of preheat and then 45 of cooking plus another 45. So an hour and a half they've been inside here. So hopefully uh, they're cooked. Oh, there's steam coming out. <laughs> they look okay. They're passable. They're not super crispy. Maybe it's just they're not getting crispy. So that's dinner done. Um, our next task is gonna be sleeping inside the tent, which we'll uh, record. All right, so we're in the rooftop tent and we're going to experience our first night sleeping. Um, the bed's comfy, so it should be all sweet, but we'll let you know in the morning, so we'll see you then. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we had our first night up in the rooftop tent and you get a really good sleep. It was really nice up there. What do you reckon, cameraman? Yep, rate it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. Now nah, she had a good night's sleep too. We, we both slept in, it's like nine o'clock now, and um, honestly, it was a really good sleep. Uh, it's better than I thought it was gonna be. So um, the one thing obviously is you're up in a rooftop tent, so I need to go get up and pee, and that was like, you know, having to use a ladder at like, you know, three in the morning is kind of annoying, but I don't know, I think we'll get used to that. Um, but apart from that, it was awesome up there. The pockets were mint, we watched, you know, some TV shows up there at night, and it was, it was awesome. So anyway, this morning, 
funnily enough, the house literally has no power, so we're going to have to make breakfast and coffees and all that on the car. So we've got about 13.2 volts right now, which we haven't charged it. Like, it's getting about an amp in from the sun at the moment. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and make breakfast, do coffees, all off the inverter. So we'll see how we go. Yeah. It's working? Yeah, boiling water. <laughs> that was quick. Oh my we're gosh, it's such a good 63 day amps we've gone. Oh, it's working! <laughs> it's doing it! It literally Patrick. hasn't been charged since last night. Like, it hasn't been charged at all. Okay, so we're buying a coffee machine. Ha ha ha. Good work, lithium. Did that no worries at all. And now I know this is ridiculous glamping absurdity, but look, if it could fit in the car and didn't use all the battery, I was happy to have it. So that's the second coffee made, and we're still at 13 volts. It seems like I could keep doing it all day, so I'm really impressed. And it was pulling like 60 amps through that machine. Like, it's not a small machine, it's a full-on, like, legit coffee machine. But now I was back to trying to see again if we could cook with electricity using my 12 volt setup. All right, so it's time to do our breakfast and we're gonna try again on the hot plate, but we're gonna use a different pan. We're gonna use a cast iron pan. Um, this one's a lot flatter and it should hopefully transfer the heat and hold the heat a lot better. <laughs> Look, I probably could crank the voltage to crank this to three, make it a little bit higher. Or I don't know if the inverter's gonna trip. All right, screw it. Anya's got game. Probably drawing like 50 amps now. 41 amps. It's definitely it's still not too bad. Once the pan heats up and gets a lot of heat into it, it's doing pretty good. I think it's just like this old hot plate technology. It's not very efficient on the amp draw. Um, and obviously, yeah, using a big heavy cast iron pan um, takes a little bit while to get the heat into it. Once the heat is into it, it uh, should cook fairly well. So the bacon hash browns have been cooking now for 15 minutes on there, just on that level two setting. We occasionally, you know, put it up to three, but that's pretty much all it's been on. And look, they're cooking, but it's definitely taken a lot longer than, uh, you know, butane would. But now that heat's into the cast iron pan, I um, reckon we're ready for the eggs. And now the electric hot plate was working. It wasn't tripping the inverter, it wasn't tripping the BMS, but it was taking quite a while to cook. And you could slowly see it taking away, you know, the battery voltage and percentage of the battery as we were cooking the meal. And it was safe to say this wasn't the most efficient way to cook breakfast. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes now cooking and everything's actually coming together pretty well. It's finally got some good heat into it. Um, the last like three minutes, we probably turned it on to number three. So we're drawing 40 amps out of it, but um, it's really helped to crisp up everything. And I'll show you what it all looks like. It's looking bloody good. All right, so this morning's cook up went so much better than last night. I think if we had to use this pan last night, we would have cooked the Palmer, no worries. Um, but I just need that proper service area to contact with the hot plate. Another thing I think I've learned is that these hot plates aren't super efficient. I think an induction cooker would be a lot more efficient, as in, you know, less loss of energy. Um, but when we did crank up the three, it did eventually, you know, start to heat it up. And this is, as I say, isn't gonna, we're not aiming for this to be our primary cooking source. We just wanted to back up for the butane that in case we wanna have something else, like two things cooking at once, it was possible. Um, but I mean, hey, if you're going like just, you're driving four hours, so you stop for lunch, you wanna quickly mash up something, I could set this to four and just let it run and like the voltage being a full battery you're gonna be able to cook no worries so it's definitely an option um but yeah we'll just have to have to see how what we end up doing which i don't know what we're gonna do i reckon we just end up either we're gonna bring that or we're gonna buy a small induction cooker i don't know yet we'll have to look around and see how much you know came out in that one from but yeah so if you saw last time when we tried to cook dinner with the travel buddy it took a very very long time we had a preheating for 45 minutes and then we had um, wedges in there for just over an hour and a half and they still weren't cooked. And if you were in a travel buddy, you might have had this issue before. And look, it's not as big of a deal when the car's running because your voltage is a bit higher, so it does actually cook a lot faster. But if you're just like sitting out at camp, you know, with travel buddy on, your voltage on your battery might only read like 12.8 volts. And if that's the case, it's gonna take a while to cook. So there is a solution to this. And this is a step up converter. You can buy them on eBay for like 20 bucks. And essentially all they do is step the voltage up from 12 volts up to 14.8 volts. And so with a higher voltage, this will get hotter a lot faster, meaning we can cook a lot faster, meaning our food will be ready a lot faster. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is install this in the car today. Um, these do have a slight efficiency loss, so they let out energy in the terms of heat. So um, it's not 100% pure, you know, no loss. Um, you do lose some, but it does make it so much quicker to cook with. So 
what we're going to do today is essentially wire this up to the trail buddy and then we'll see how much of a difference it makes and these are extremely simple to wire up essentially you have your power coming in and then your power coming out so that's going to connect you up to your battery uh, make sure this is fused and then this is going to go to your travel buddy so how to wire it up depends on if your travel buddy is going to stay in your car the entire time or whether you want it to be portable um, if you want it to be portable what i'd recommend is using one of these little cig pot cigarette uh, ports and you can wire that up straight to the output on these inverter onto these converters and then from there, you can plug your travel buddy straight into it. This is probably going to be a more permanent solution for me. So I think I'm going to hardwire this, mount this into the back of the uh, drawers, and then run power to my fuse block on here, and then run power from here straight into the travel buddy. So cut some cables, do some wiring, and hopefully we should have this all together pretty quickly. So I couldn't really make the mind up whether I wanted to be portable or like fixed. So I've kind of done a hybrid. Um, the actual converter is fixed to the draw system, um, but the output of the converter is going to a 12 volt plug. So I can keep the travel buddy on a plug for now because I'm not really sure where I'm gonna be finally mounting it. This is kind of just like a temporary solution. And then I'll be able to plug it straight in. Boom, be able to flick on um, the converter and then that'll give this power and travel buddy should be operating on 15 volts. And if I decide I don't want it on 15 volts, I can always, put it back onto the normal 12 volt for whatever reason. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, so now I'll plug the travel buddy into our new 15 volt outlet, which is connected obviously back to the step up converter. And now the travel buddy is on, it's drawing about five amps at the moment. So obviously then it's going through the step up converter, that's converting it to 15 volts. So I think the amperage will then change slightly um, and then be fed into the travel buddy. But going up to that high voltage, I just put a multimeter on this before and this is letting out about 15.1 volts. So it should be heating up this trail buddy a lot faster than what it was before. And for those interested, this is mounted back here uh, on the drawer, so screwed in there and the cable runs down under here and up and into the toilet box. And then obviously I've got another cable that comes off it um, for this little socket. So I guess the only thing left now is to cook some food in it because I've seen the data, I know that the step up converters do make a huge difference, especially, you know, when your voltage is low. Um, so I guess all we're going to do now is get some food, throw it in there and we'll see how it performs. Alright, so the oven's preheated for 15 minutes now and it's bloody hot on the surface. So I'm going to put in some frozen Samoa things and we'll see how long it takes. This could be turned the camera on because I saw smoke coming out of there, and it's only been like 15 minutes they've been in there for, but I saw smoke. Oh, oh wow. I put them in frozen. These are smells, by the way. I put them in frozen, and in 15 minutes, these are nearly done. That was insane. That sticks everything. And now that might not surprise some travel buddy owners, but realize my car hasn't been running for like four or five days, and the voltage isn't that high, and it's still cooked frozen food that quickly, so. Definitely the step-by converter works. So while I was packing up, I decided that I wanted USB ports inside the tent. And now I have talked about, you know, potentially maybe making a grommet hole somewhere, but I'm not really game enough to put a hole in it just yet, um, considering how new it is. Um, but what I've done is basically just, I had this light cord going into the tent for that big light strip, and I've basically just attached some USBs to it. Um, really basic. Um, but yeah, so I got some USB ports inside the tent, so we can charge phones and stuff up there. So I don't know if we're going a bit silly here. Um, we're changing things up. So we went shopping yesterday and we bought <laughs> we bought some things that I never ever thought I would ever have inside of my car or even take camping in general. But I think it's going to be a good experiment. Um, I've got a lithium battery. I need to test it. What better way to test it than you know, get some high current appliances and run them off it. So, uh, we've got an espresso machine. This is all just Kmart specs. This is like, this was $95 or something. Induction cooker, that was like 50 bucks. Now, look, you know, this is, this is I don't know the actual quality of this gear. Uh, it's more just to like give everything a shot and test it. Um, I really was curious to do a hybrid sort of gas and induction cook and sort of see how they both work as a hybrid. Um, and we had that hot plate, but as you saw from that, you know, those cooking videos, it just took for ages to heat up and it wasn't really that great. So I'm really hoping that the induction cooker is going to do it all a lot better, a lot faster, a lot more efficient. Um, but yeah, the only way to find it out, we got the car basically fully charged. We've been driving, we were driving it yesterday for like three hours. So um, it should be all good to go. And um, yeah, we'll make some coffees, make some bacon and eggs, see how it goes. 
So a quick rundown on the specs for a lot of this gear. So this thing is a 2000 watt induction cooker. It's rated, um, you can turn it up between 300 and 2000 watts, I believe. So we've got a 1500 watt inverter, which I think can do a max out draw of 1800 watts for like a certain amount of time. Um, but yeah, we'll basically try this 1500 watts, see how it goes, see how efficient it is to cook stuff. And um, yeah, we also bought some induction cooking appropriate uh, pots and pans because yeah, you need to have it the right material inside the pan for the induction cooking to work since it's using magnets to actually heat it. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked to actually try it. Um, see how many amps it draws. So I'm gonna reset all the meters so we can track exactly how many amp hours it costs to make eggs and bacon. So let's get into it. 13.3 volts, use no power, all reset. Oh, I hate the inverter. Let's go see how much power she's drawing. 50 amps. Look how fast that top right number is climbing. That's how much it takes to cook coffee. You can see that right there in real time. It, it says green. It says go for coffee. We only use 850 milliamps in getting it up to, up to temp. 850 milliamps for one cup of coffee. That's actually not that bad. So just then we made two coffees and it used five amp hours to make that. So 120 amp hour battery. You make a fair few coffees before uh, you go dead. But um, next we're gonna do the eggs and bacon on the induction cooker. So let's see how much power that draws. Well, it seems the coffee machine has somehow got prime real estate in the 80s series. Uh, never thought I'd see the day. All right, so now it's time to do the induction cooking and I've reset the gauge on our little monitor so we'll know exactly how much um, the system's uh, drawing. So I've never used one of these before, but I think we just put the pan on, hit power. 1200 watts, okay. It's, oh, it's coming alive. Pan's getting hot. We're pulling 60 amps. And then pressing that button, you can crank it up to 1400, 1600, or turn it down. So we'll just leave it at 1200 for now. That's like already hot, all right. We're already getting sizzles. I can get some B-roll of your. Oh. Ooh. So I think we just tripped the inverter. Let me just power off that. The voltage is everything is still fine on the unit, but the inverter tripped. That was only on 1200 watts, which is about, that, that should be able to keep up with 1200 watts. So I'm kind of confused why it died on us like that, because we still got, we only used two, two amp hours. I'm trying to feel for heat on the inverter. The inverter's not even hot. I've dropped it down to a thousand watts now. We're playing, pulling 48 amps right now. So it tripped again. So I've dropped it down to 800 watts. We're pulling 38 amps. We've used nearly five amps right now in our cooking time. I'm gonna try to give it a bit more power into it and see what happens. We're at 1200 watts. See if this inverter trips again. So at 1200 watts, we're pulling 62 amps off the system. Oh, oh. I think that might've been voltage of the battery that just dropped us below there. All right, so what's happening is the inverter is actually not tripping. The inverter is fine. What's happening is our voltage on our battery is getting below 11 point, I think it's 11.1 volts. And the battery has a BMS on it, which essentially will, will cut it off if the voltage gets too low to preserve the battery's health. And that's what's happening. The BMS is cutting off the battery because it's saying the voltage is too low and we're losing our power, the inverter trips, everything turns off. So it's not so much that the inverter can't do it, it's that the battery can't sustain a high enough voltage to keep, you know, the BMS happy. But everything's cooking fine and like the inverter is still the battery's still sitting on quite a high amount of amps, so we'll just see what happens. Oh, lost power again. So this is what we're sort of dealing with. We're sitting on 800 watts cooking, pulling about 40 amps. Our voltage sits around 12 volts. Um, when we crank it any higher, the voltage will tank a bit and then go down to like 11, 11.3. And when it sort of starts to do that, that's when the system, you know, the BMS kills power to the entire system. So. That's just one thing to note. We used a 120 amp hour battery. It, uh, it's, it's like, it's enough, but it's sort of not in a way. Like we have done a bit this morning, but really we also haven't. So it's just, I don't know. We definitely be something to monitor as we go along. But I can safely say, well, with 120 amp hours lithium, we did two coffees and eggs and bacon, no dramas. And when I shut the system off, we still have about 13 volts, it says, which I think's, I was on a lower threshold. I think it's about, I don't know. 30, 40% of battery left. But I mean, by rights, according to what my chart's been saying, we've only used 11.7 amp hours right now to cook the bacon and eggs. And we only use five amp hours to cook the um, two coffees. So 
120, 110 amp hour battery, we should still have plenty of juice left in it. So juice, juice is in power. Slow I don't know. Juice. And it cut off again. Voltage getting too low. So over the next few weeks, you'll see our triumphs and our struggles with using electricity to cook dinner, breakfast, lunch, etc. But in conclusion, I'll leave you with this. On this particular day of the trip, we had been driving for seven hours and we wanted to use the induction cooker to cook dinner as it was very windy. And well, we didn't get very far until the battery was giving us issues. Oh, <laughs> we lost power immediately. I think the issue is 120 amp hours just, I don't think personally, is enough to run these induction cookers. It's just not. Maybe a more efficient induction cooker might work, but you really need more battery space to keep that voltage higher. Or maybe even a better quality battery. Maybe that could be the issue too. I, I don't know. And I'm not fully discounting, you know, the King's battery because right now the induction cooker is going. It's, it's pulling 600 watts right now. We're pulling all together through the system 42 amp hours. The voltage is holding at 12.8, um, so it's all still working fine. We're cooking garlic bed and bread in there. We're doing all this while waiting for our butane cooker to heat up our pasta because our butane cooker is taking so long to boil with water. Because so, it's windy. Because it's windy. So, I mean, you can still use induction cooking, but it's like when you try and push to that next level, like 1200 watts through an, induct through an um, induction cooker, the BMS, the BMS on, these, on this King's battery can't handle that. It just says, no, I won't have it, and then shut this up off. After moving to lithium, I could never go back. Like, I don't ever worry about this car running dead. The fridge, everything runs 24 seven, the lights, everything is just so easy. It just, it runs itself. I don't drive this for days and it still runs. I'm so confident in it that I've now gone out and bought bloody stupid 240 volt devices now that I'm running in the car because that's how much lithium has changed my setup. When I was on my AGM battery, I'd get worried about having too many lights running on the car that the battery would drain. Now with lithium, I have all these lights, 240 volt appliances, like, it's, it's really the next level in, in 12 volt gear, like, it's just, yeah, if you can buy it, buy it, because it's, 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 it's just, it's, a, it's awesome. So, cooking with electricity, look, if you want to do it on a budget, it's not, it's just not really there yet. Um, if you've got all the money in the world, you can get a setup that'll, you know, allow you to cook 10 meals a day and you'll be able to do it, but, you know, if you're trying to be budget friendly, um, you know, cooking on fire or cooking using gas or butane or propane or whatever, still way cheaper. You'll see in the next few episodes how we sort of use a hybrid option to get through the trip. So we use a bit of butane here and electricity where we can. Oh I will God. say, however, now that we've done that mod on the Travel Buddy, it works so much better and we use the Travel Buddy all the time. Oh. You'll see in the next few videos that, that the Travel Buddy is a key part of our dinner making process. We just cook bread, food frozen food, food all that. Crap. It's fantastic after you do that mod, so I highly recommend it. But lastly, I want to know what you guys run. Um, do you guys do electric cooking? If so, what size batteries do you use? Because I feel like we're on the edge. We're so close to where it's coming to that range where it's affordable for everyone to have a lithium battery and everyone to have like you know a cheap induction cooker and you know if you can go drive to your car for you know a few hours a day charge you up you basically get a cooked dinner with just using the power that you generated that day so um, the future is very exciting for electricity and cooking with that um, it's just yeah just so close it's nearly there